last week we had a meditation on the caption walk wisely for the last few weeks we are continually meditating on wisdom on wisdom last week the caption was walk wisely i wanted to share 20 points with you but as the time permitted i was able to share only 10 points with you so that is walking wisely the 11th point he that walked wisely he will be able to win many souls the fruit of the righteous is a tree of life and he that winneth souls is wise number 12 proverbs 24:5 proverbs 24:5 a wise man is strong yeah a man of knowledge increaseth strength a wise man is very strong he is very strong So what is walking wisely when you increase knowledge when you lay up knowledge you become very strong what is the strength is it a physical strength at the time of calamity at the time of disaster at the time of difficult situations at the time where you have to take decisions if you are a wise person you'll be very strong because your knowledge increases your strength it is not the general knowledge it is the knowledge of god knowing the holy one is their knowledge the bible says parisutta rin arive arivu knowing the holy one is the knowledge a wise man he lays up knowledge he uses knowledge are right and that knowledge has become his strength so i have given this testimony many a time even recently i was sharing this testimony with somebody earlier a situation came many years back some years back we didn't know what we could do the situation was so threatening that we are left with no other option than sleeping on the platform no other option than sleeping in the platform at that time the worry was not how i would sleep because the problem in the when we are taking a step for the lord when the faith ministry when you want to obey the lord i want to be very brief is not a very big question where where my wife and our children we all will sleep but my anxiety on that day not an anxiety but a question on that day where will i keep my books where will i keep my books my dear brother my dear sister the question was there on the 3rd of september the question was there on the 3rd of september on the 5th of september there was a light on the 8th of september a new way opened on the 9th i was ministering unto god in that place you yep, some of you will be knowing that but that knowledge increased strength what is that knowledge god will not leave me god will not forsake me even the lord permitted a situation that i have to sleep on the streets that will be for my glory the lord will not forsake us So how are we able to take that bold step it's not because we are getting financial support from any organization a foreign aid no 
faith. God called us. God called us for this glorious ministry. As you all know very well, I was working in one of the most reputed institutions in India. Add to it. We were to start our own educational institution. Just because we heard the voice of the Lord, we know God called us. I was to take this decision. With two small little children with us. With our aged parents with us. God has not forsaken us. This knowledge is very, very essential. This knowledge gives us the strength. What is that knowledge? Knowledge of the word of God. Knowledge of his promises. Knowledge that God is with us. That knowledge gives us faith. It's not a blind faith. A philosopher said, in his ignorance he said this, religion is seeking for, searching for a black cat in a dark room, a blind man searching for a black cat in a dark room when it was not there. A blind man searching for a black cat in a dark room when it is not there. He said that's a religion. It's absolute nonsense. It is absolute nonsense. We are not searching for a black cat in a dark room and we are not blind, it is not that cat is not there. The Lord has opened up our eyes, we are walking in the light, we are searching God's blessings which are there, which are promised. It is there. God will not leave us. God will not forsake us. When one way is closed, God can open hundred ways for us. He openeth the door, nobody can shut it. He shuts the door, nobody can open it. We have seen many situations. How is that we are able to stand firm? It is the strength. What is the strength? Strength of the knowledge. What is that knowledge? Knowledge of the Holy One. Knowing God. Knowing God's power. Knowing God's ways, knowing God's promises, knowing what God can do, that knowledge gives us strength. Knowledge in the Bible. Okay, there was a situation David was to run away into the forest. There was a situation Joseph was sold to the Midianites. There was a situation, there was famine in the land of Canaan, God has promised to Abraham. There was a situation to Isaac, that the Amalekites were chasing him, chasing him out of the, their regions. There were situations like that. There were situations where the apostles caught in the midst, they could not go forward, they could not go back. In the midst, sea they were caught. They didn't know what they could do. There were situations. Only those situations permitted them to see miracles. Only those situations permitted them to see miracles. I remember one message I preached uh, some time back. You want to see miracle? You want to see miracle? Those who want to see miracle in your life, lift up your hands and say hallelujah. Those who want to see miracle, lift up your hands and say hallelujah. Shout and say hallelujah. 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 You want to see a miracle in your life. You want to see a miracle in your life for some time, you have to be in the mid-sea. No storm, Lord. No mid-sea experience. The sea should be very smooth. No waves, no threatening. My efforts must be fruitful. And Jesus must always be with me. Jesus must always be with me. He must be always on my side. I must be always able to feel his presence. I tell you, you cannot see a miracle. You cannot see a miracle. If you have to see a miracle, 
we want to see Jesus walking on the water. Peter, if you want to have an experience that you should walk on a troubled water, there must be troubled water. There must be troubled water. How can you have a miracle of walking on a troubled water if there is no troubled water? How many of you want to have troubled waters? Huh? No hallelujah. No praise that already we are in trouble. You want us to pray for troubled waters. But if you want to walk on troubled waters, troubled waters must be there, sister. Troubled waters must be there, brother. You don't want troubled water, then you can never walk on troubled water. If you don't want to have darkness, you cannot see the miracle of light coming in darkness. You cannot have the miracle of light turning into dark, or darkness turning into light. If you want to have the miracle of sweet water, you must taste bitter water. They tasted that water, that water was bitter. Then the Lord performed the miracle there. Then the Lord performed the miracle there. The bitter water became sweet. I don't want any bitter water. Then you can't see a miracle. You all wanted to see miracles. Now I love to sincerely pray for you. The Lord should prepare the situations for a miracle. I ask a question again. Now you would have got a better knowledge now of a miracle. How many of you want a miracle? Be bold. Be strong. There's knowledge. God will not leave me. God will not forsake me. These difficult situations, that gives us strength. I really want a Bible philosophy, Bible principle. If you, the, when troubles come, there we see the strength of a man. They are strong, enough to face their storm, or you are weak. There is a saying in English, there is no work that has never seen a storm. There is no work that has never seen a storm. The storm makes it, it uh, makes the work tree uh, wave like this. More and more it waves, the root goes deeper and deeper. Deeper and deeper the root goes, the trees, the tree grows taller and taller and taller. The more you are shaken, and you are in Jesus, the more you are shaken, the more root, the roots go down in Jesus. The more and more the root goes down and down, he will grow taller and taller and taller. That's what the English saying goes. There's no work that has not seen a storm. You know, thousands of coconut trees have fallen in the delta area, but there are some trees which are standing. Can anybody tell me the reason why? It is the same storm. When you plant a coconut tree, now the agriculture expert says, you have to dig a three feet pit, a three foot pit deep. And to plant a coconut tree, you have to put stones underneath. Then you have to keep the coconut seed or the plant then put the manure for one foot. Use minimal water. It will give the deep root. The roots will go through the stones that you have put. But many of them, when they plant, they just dig it for one foot, make it easier. And they don't put stones underneath so that the roots can grow faster. That's the main reason for most of the trees that are uprooted, they didn't use the principle of farming correctly. I heard this when an agricultural scientist was saying this. Make the pit deeper. 
don't think these problems will bury you. It's a very deep problem. I cannot come out. You can come out. A good seed can never lie down. It will come out. If there's proper water, proper breathing, it will come out. More stones underneath, more stronger that tree can be. A very simple principle. More problems, you'll become more strong. Less problem, you'll be less strong. No problem, you'll have no strength. Now you want problem or not? Even now you don't want problems. Hmm? Nobody seems to have nobody seems to have problems. My dear brother, my dear sister, our knowledge increases strength. Our knowledge, knowledge of God especially, knowledge of the word of God, knowledge of what God has done for the saints, what he has done for others, he'll do for us. It's no secret what God can do. It's no secret what God can do. What he has done for others, he will do for us. What he has done for others, he will do for us. I remember once in, when I was in ACA, I preached a message on the caption, Sweet Sufferings. Sweet Sufferings. Sufferings are good. Childbearing is very painful. But every married woman, she desires that pain. She desires that pain. She wants to have a child. If she is barren or if there is no childbearing, she can't be, oh, I don't have any problem, pa. no pain, I am happy. No, no woman says. She goes to doctors, she goes to people, she goes to different temples, mosques, uh, this place, that place, she takes this medicine, that counsel, everything. She wants to bear a child. She knew very well that would be painful. But there is a joy in that pain. She waits for that time. She wants to bring out a child in her life. So you play a game. Hockey, football, cricket, very painful. Stand in the sun for five days. You are a very good batsman. You are the opening batsman. Your team bats for three days. Three days. You are the opening batsman. You are the not out batsman. All three days you were in the sun. Focusing on small ball. Comes in the speed of 100 kilometer, 120 kilometer per hour speed. You got a small bat. Six inches wide. You have to block that ball with that. Very painful. You have to strain every nerve to know the steps of the bowler, how he bowls. You must know how the opponent captain has formed the team. Where, the, where is the gap? Very strainful. Every second strainful. But to win that trophy, you must be able to strain your nerves. You must be able to strain your nerves. You can't blame the bowler. The bowler is bowling that ball, not for you to take runs. Every ball he, blow, he uh, bowls, he wants to make you out. You can't go, he is always throwing to make me out. He is doing that only for that. That's the part of the game. You can't weep for that. There are 11 players standing around. Every moment trying to make you out. You can't cry for that. They are there. They are not to make you take century. They are just standing there to see that you are getting out. And you have got a team player. Very friendly, your team. He comes and talks with you, strategies and all. But if there is a situation that he would get run out, he'll make sure that you get run out. To save him, 
He's not you know, he should not get run out. I'll get run out. Can you imagine a team player like that? And now you remember the nine people sitting on the gallery. Your friends, your team members. When you hit a sixer, they'll clap. When you hit a boundary, they'll clap. They all are your friends. And you're going on hitting and hitting and hitting. You're not getting out. They'll start praying. They also have to play, no? You both are not leaving for three days. So what about the nine people? They'll be praying. Lord, I must get a chance. Lord, I must also play. What does it mean that I must also play? He has to get out. So all the 21 people around you, all the 21 people around you, they are only waiting for your defeat. You want to play the game? Or do you want 21 people to support you? If all the 21 people support you, you can't play the game. The game will be interesting when all the 21 people are waiting for you are out. And there will be thousands sitting on the gallery. They all will be shouting when you get a sixer. They all will be shouting when you get a boundary. Don't get excited. When you get out also, they will be shouting. When you get out also, they will be shouting. They are not with you. When you hit sixer, they will shout. When you get bold, they will shout. Don't think they are with you. Play alone. Play alone. Victory. Sweet suffering. Sweet suffering. My dear brother, my dear sister. I don't know, I'm constrained to speak to you. This value, this knowledge gives the strength. Knowledge of the word of God. Knowledge of your God. What God can do in my life. How powerful God is. One who is with me is greater than one who is in the world. One who is with me is greater than one who is in the world. That knowledge that helps Elisha to face the Syrian army that helped Moses to lead about 30 lakhs people out of Egypt, that helped Joshua to see through foot of Jericho, one who is with me. He asked a question about that man. Are you on my side, on our side, or are you on the side of the opposite? If you are with me, victory is ours. If you are on the opposite side, we cannot win. If the Lord is for you, who can stand against you? If the Lord is not for you, who can help you? And really again, if the Lord is for you, who can stand against you? If the Lord is not for you, who can help you? Be bold. Be strong. Our God is great. Glory be to the Lord's holy name. We'll go to point number 13. Point number 11. Win souls. Point number two, be strong. Point number 13, humble minded. Humble minded. Proverbs 11, verse 2. Proverbs 11, 2. When pride cometh, then cometh shame. But with the lowly is wisdom. But with the lowly, is wisdom. More you become stronger, more you become stronger, you may tempt to have pride. Oh, I can do it. I can do it. It's I can solve it. Ah, it is not a big problem. The more you become stronger, more you become proudish. Because pride comes, you make mistakes. You are not wise. You must be strong, but at the same time, there must be humility. There must be humility. A lowly mind. I can do all things through Christ that strengtheneth me. Without Christ, I can do nothing. Without Christ, 
I can do nothing. I am what I am, but by the grace of God. I can run through a battle by Him. I can scale over a wall by Him. Through Christ that strengtheneth me, I can do all things. Without Him, I can do nothing. That is the wisdom. Oh, I can manage. I will do it. When you think that you can do it, God will prove that you can't do it. That is why many a time we miss a miracle. Not because we didn't have knowledge. With that knowledge, in Romans we read, knowledge perfect. Knowledge perfect. Knowledge makes one arrogant. Knowledge should give us strength. The same knowledge should not give us arrogance. So we have to be very careful. Knowledge perfect. In Tamil, what we read, Arivu Yirumapai Undak. Arivu Yirumapai Undak. Ah, I can do it. I can play. I can manage. Because of that, I can do it should give you faith, should give you face the battle. But the same thing I can do it should not give you arrogance. We have to be very careful in that area. He should not give you pride. More and more you are lowly. More and more you are humble-minded. More and more grace is given. There are different ways how we can make our grace increase. As I said earlier, one of the ways, when many saints praise God because of what you have done, grace will abound toward you. And more humble you are, more grace will come upon you. See, from the mountaintop, waters run towards a lowly area. When those waters cannot run through, floods will come. Floods are not because of rain. Floods are because the rain water are unable to be drained off. If the water can drain off, There'll be no flood problem. Okay? Just imagine for a minute. Because water can drain off, there will be no flood problem. Somewhere that water is unable to drain off, there's stagnation, or some difficulty, some blockade, or the rain water cannot go into the earth because of many buildings, many of artificial things. So what happened? Flood. It's a very simple ecological matter. The same way that knowledge, if it cannot have a free flow, is what God's doing. Only God has done this. Or oh, my effort has done it. The very next day, Nebuchadnezzar, like a cattle he was to, Grace. Like a cattle, he was to eat grass. His arrogance. I built Babylon. I can do it. God is against those who have, those who have got pride. Against the proud. When God is against you, who can be for you? Nobody can help you. When you break God's principles in your life, We had a series of messages in the evening services for some time. Blessings and curses. Blessings and curses. Why do we have curses in our life? Many a time because we break God's principles in our lives. We behave against the word of God. We get entanglements against the word of God. We don't apply God's principles in our life. We can't blame God. Why is not God helping me? Because we applied God's, we didn't apply God's principles. 
my dear brother my dear sister so for you to walk wisely you must be able to win souls uh, number 2 you must be strong because of the knowledge number 3 you should be humble minded number 4 Number four. That's what fourteen point number fourteen. Proverbs fourteen eight. Please make a note of it. Proverbs fourteen eight. The wisdom of the prudent. The wisdom of the prudent is to understand or diligently discern his way. But the folly of fools is deceit. the folly of fools is a deceit muttal easy ay amandu poyirra muttal nedigave poi thandikapadra he goes in the same way again and again again and again again and again finally he is punished there are ways which seem good unto man the end thereof is death மனுஷனுக்கு செம்மையாய் தோன்றுகிற வழிகள் உண்டு முடிவு மரணம் நான் இதை செய்துருவேன் அதை செஞ்சுருவேன் இப்படி செஞ்சுருவேன் ஆட்டை வெட்டி காட்டில் போட்டுருவேன் காட்டு வெட்டி ஆட்டில் போட்டுருவேன் என்னென்னமோ மனுஷன் பிளான் பண்ணுவேன் தி எண்ட் தேர் ஆஃப் இஸ் டெத் தி எண்ட் தேர் ஆஃப் இஸ் டெத் இட்ஸ் வெரி வெரி இம்பார்ட்டன்ட் நாட் ஓன்லி ஃபார் சில்ட்ரன் அடல்ட்ஸ் க்ரோன் அப் டு வாக் வைஸ்லி தட் வுட் வி ரீட் the wisdom of the prudent you are already prudent very careful viveham prudent means viveham you are very prudent what is the wisdom of a prudent vivehinude gnani enna he discerns his ways he understands his ways diligently discern his ways i am buying this i am selling this i am going here i am going to do this i am going to do that he diligently discern his ways he sits and thinks he plans on the consequences what the arrogant thing ah oh, i can manage even in our arrogance at times we by mistake we think that ah oh, god will help me i know one elderly gentleman in his arrogance he uses god how does he say na poite irpa andar en pinnal vandigite irpa na poite irpa andar pinnal vandigite irpa na ye ishtapadi seiven andar na kai vida matar that's arrogance andar na kai vida matar we don't apply god's principles in our life then we say that god will not leave me god will not forsake me it is rubbish it's nonsense what you are doing is that right or wrong what you have done is that right or wrong okay i have done, done a wrong thing now what can i do at least humble yourself cry unto god lord i have done a foolish thing i have done something foolishly i have worked against your principle lord i have spoken against you i have spoken against your servant i have done something wrong and because of that i got this consequence now have mercy on me at least humble yourself you cannot say i will do what i want god will not leave me god will not forsake me again i say i use a word please excuse me that's rubbish that's nonsense a wise man the wisdom of a prudent he understands his ways the literal meaning is diligently discern this is right this is wrong i can do this i cannot do that this is how i should do this is what the bible says this is where i have broken the principle of god so the wisdom of a prudent is understanding the way so today it is little deeper these five four points number 1 the wise man he wins souls that continuation of the 10th he turns away the wrath 11 he wins soul and because of his knowledge 
he became strong he became strong knowledge of the holy one knowledge of the scriptures he became strong when he became strong a wise man he is humble minded he is humble minded lowly of mind not arrogant not arrogant and that gives him understanding the way i just say one thing and conclude to regarding i'll be continuing it point 15 restraints in his heart restraints in his heart 2911 proverbs 2911 a fool gives full vent to his spirit but a wise man quietly holds it back when he understands his ways tries to keep everything in his heart is better in god and him about mary the bible says she kept everything in her heart she kept everything in her heart and she was meditating on it she was thinking about it the depth of life is very very essential it is one of the traits of wise men not blah 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 Just keep it in your heart. What, we'll see what God can do. Keeps everything, good or bad. My dear brother, my dear sister. About this more I explain the next week. God willing. These five points. Give a deep thought. It's very deep. To walk wisely. To walk wisely. you must be able to win souls you cannot make your relatives enemy you can't make your friends enemy you can't make your pastor enemy you cannot make your wife enemy you cannot make your husband enemy if you are a wise person you'll win souls you'll win souls just imagine for a minute it's a very important point your your own parents they don't like you your own co-bonds don't like you your friends don't like you your wife doesn't like you your children don't like you how miserable that life would be how miserable that life would be everybody thinks that you are a cheat just think for a minute if you are a wise person with your love with your affection i don't know this comes to my mind i know why i say this mother teresa and princess diana both of them died on the same day death will come for mother teresa princess diana about princess diana she left her husband she was with another muslim guy when the accident took place there was a child in her womb not born through her husband with that she died when mother teresa died the whole world wept with her wept for her and this was very much notable prime minister uh, head of russia putin uh, he came for the funeral of mother teresa just a small woman in west bengal putin came world leaders came and said to the leader of a country president of a country statesman came for her funeral when her body was interred putin wept a man from a country where there's no faith in god putin wept when mother teresa was buried 
How many persons really weep for you when you die? When Narahaswaran was killed, till this day the world celebrates his death. Will people rejoice over your death or will there be some to weep for your death? Win souls. If you are a wise person, you will win souls. If you are a wise person, because of your knowledge, you will increase your strength. If you are a wise person, because of your strength, you will not be arrogant, you will be humble. You will not be arrogant, you will be humble. When your knowledge increase, when you are humble, you discern your ways. You understand your ways. You understand your business. You understand your dealings. You understand your ministry. You understand your family situation. You understand your income. You understand the expenditure. You are a wise person. You understand your investment. Because you are a wise person, you understand your ways. And the fifth one, a wise person restrains things in his heart. Problems will not make you drown. Problems will make you float. The Mitzi experience is not to drown you. The Mitzi experience is to see Jesus coming to you walking on the water. It is to make Peter walk on the water. Don't be scared. When he is in the boat, you can smile at the storm. When Jesus is in the boat, I can smile at the storms. Shall we pray?